Well, back slightly earlier than planned for today's episode of The Head Coach because we've got a chance to become FA Cup giant killers. We've got a first round tie before a big trip to Stevenage at the top end of the National League. But things at the moment are very frustrating. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 45 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We are back, returning after two straight defeats by one goal to nil. But we can divert our attention away from the league today because we face League One relegation strugglers at Crinton Stanley in the FA Cup first round. James Tavernier, the former Rangers star in charge of them before a midweek game at Stevenage. Three points and two places separate us. And at the moment, we're at risk of falling out of the playoff spots. We will, of course, still come back later in the month and show the game against our former club, Maidenhead 2. They're now up in 15th place after a good run of form. And they're only eight points behind us. So there's a little bit of a worry at the moment. If you're looking forward to seeing how we get on though, and you are enjoying this series, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. We'll talk about some of the other stuff going on as well. But the most important thing is the results because there's been a little bit more transfer work. It's calmed down a lot now. But injuries are first signs of fixture congestion. And to be honest, some awful finishing is really costing us a chance at automatic promotion. Having said that, those two games we did lose early in the season are against now the top two. So it does look like they were the early title contenders. But for us, let's go and get through to the transfers. Not an awful lot since you were last with me but a little bit more coming into the club. So a couple of players have left, both of them on loan. One from the first team, which is Ollie Morris. He's gone to Tamworth, the young right back. It's a good player. We'll get some football and hopefully develop. And then Darko Kimball, who was in the under 18s. He's not great. He's not got the biggest potential. We'll see how he gets on at Braintree. Coming in instead was just Harvey Greenslade. He came in, I think, just after the last episode. A centre forward that was already being bid for good target man decent enough as a backup and has played four games off the bench already but man of the match in one as well which despite not getting a goal and assist is a pretty impressive effort but if we have a look at the schedule and what's gone on it's really frustrating we had the four back-to-back 2-1 -back wins that you saw the end of in the last episode then of course it was that disappointment against Boreham Wood and in the two games after I just sort of thought right we've cracked it now 3-0 wins we were comfortable but it's all gone wrong again since. We cannot consistently score goals. After keeping four clean sheets in a row, we've now gone back to not being able to keep one. It's just such an inconsistent and bizarre season. So after you were with me, we won 3-0 at home to York. I should say at this point as well, and you can see it from the stats, we were really helped by a first half red card. It was 0-0, it was pretty even before that. But after it, we played against 10 and Sablia, Colkit and Burrell got themselves a goal apiece. It was Burrow again amongst the goal scorers with Chris Bennett and Michael Nelson either side at Ebbsfleet. A 0-0 draw at Folkestone in the FA Cup, but the reserves did a good job the second time around. A 3-0 win with Cheek, Cook and McIntyre getting one each. A 2-0 draw against Halifax was the start of the spiral downwards. A disappointing 91st minute equaliser conceded. Burrow and Colkit had got the goals for us. And then the goals just dried up entirely. A 1-0 defeat against Scunthorpe and a 1-0 defeat against Dulwich Hamlet. But I've got to show you the stats from these games because against Scunthorpe, and this is why I'm finding this season difficult, they had six shots, two on target, expected goals 0.6. We had 18 shots, five on target, expected goals of almost two. Three times the amount of corners, nearly two thirds of the possession. We were dominant. Against Dulwich Hamlet at home, well, the stats are a fairly similar story. 20 shots for us, 7 shots for them, 2.3 expected goals, not to 0.6 expected goals of Dulwich. Colkit got a 5.8. He was that bad in front of goal. And Greenslade, he got player of the match for setting up two clear-cut chances. Burrell missed both of them. So everything is there bar the results. We are playing well. We are dominating virtually every match we play in. But we're just not finding a regular goal scoring threat and we're letting in silly goals at times. So the two boxes are still the problem. We've said it every episode so far this season. With that done though, we've got to get through to the fixtures because this is a nice little relief for us today in the FA Cup. And I am going to take it seriously because a good run in the cup finances into the club might well be a way to save our job. Accrington were 22nd when the draw was made. They are now bottom of League One with 10 points from their 16 games. 
Alongside Crew, who didn't offer us that job before we joined Bromley, let's have a look at who their star players are. We know they've got the big man in charge, James Tavernier. Lots of lone players. Mitch Clark at left back is a decent enough pro at 28. He seems to be pretty good for the level, in fairness. Harvey Rogers, we've definitely managed somewhere before. Not quite sure what club. Ryan Rydell, the former Stockport man. Some good goalkeepers. Will Lankshire played for us in the Hemel save last year. Scored a few important goals in that one. It's a good side. They probably shouldn't be bottom. I'm a bit surprised they've got Louis Trickett on the bench because he was with us in the distillery save and he couldn't get into our squad there. But in fairness, he does seem to have had a much better development here. So let's just go and get through to the lineup. See what team we can put out. It just comes down to goals. Burrell and Colkett inconsistent. The quality of the play isn't great. We've tried to drop a little bit to what we were doing with Woking. So the shorter passing, trying to keep the ball a bit better. And crucially, after a month out injured, we've got Andy Riley back as well. He is going to be pivotal in that midfield. He's one of the best playmakers in the league. Whether he was playing up front or in midfield, he was creating chances. And I'm going to rely on that again. We're also almost back to full fitness for Josh Nichols. He is now just maybe a few days away. So overall, we're getting our 11 back. And the few times we have had it this year, like against York and Ebb's fleet, we've looked really good. So I'm happy with what we've got. This is the squad for today, though. Up to nine subs from five in the FA Cup, but they'll all feature later on if need be. The 11 we're going to be focusing on a James Hilson in goal. Bennett, Thomas and Paulwell at the back three with Revan and Hill the wingbacks. Hill's still deputising out there and he's doing okay, so we'll leave him out there for this one. Riley is back in alongside Sablia and Nelson in the midfield three. And then Colkit and Burrell up front. Colkit seems to be a bit inconsistent. Scores goals, then just drops off entirely. But we're hoping today he has one of his good ones and makes amends for his performance last week. Through to the teams we go. We're playing at home. We've got a big crowd in front of us. And it's a real chance in the FA Cup. Can we get through to the second round? Could we get all the way to the third? And if we want to get there, we've got to beat League One opposition today. As we head into the match against Accrington Stanley, I almost don't know who favourites are for this one. I guess before the last two games, it probably would have been us. But now we've dropped off. We didn't look great against Folkestone in the last round either. It doesn't bode particularly well for us here. We're going to get through to the first half. We're going to try and be on the front foot. But hopefully Accrington will just fold. And I feel like with the confidence of both of these teams, whoever scores the first goal probably wins it. Well, look at this for a free kick. 17 minutes gone. It's right on the line. And Sablia heads in at the back post. It's a fabulous finish. Revan's delivery was great. And I was about to say it's a similar pattern because look, We've dominated the stats. We didn't have the lead to show for it. But this time we're taking advantage. Getting lots of fouls out of Accrington. Forcing balls into the box. And we've got the first one of this game. I feel more confident about this than I do about half the league matches. And if we can start taking advantage of set pieces. Something that's been a hallmark of our good seasons across every save this year. It might give us a better opportunity. Again though, lots of chances. Only one goal to show for it. And from open play, we don't look that great. I've got to bear in mind in this game too that we've got a game on Tuesday night. We've also got Riley coming back to fitness making his first start today. So we will have to make some adjustments as this game goes on. But at the moment, Accrington haven't laid a glove on us and we've got to be so pleased with his performance. At 10 minutes gone in the second half, again not creating many great chances. But in front of almost a sellout crowd, they will not care if we get through. Revan puts the ball in Sablia again. Header straight at a keeper. Can we at least create something from open play? It would be nice. Riley has had his little turn now. He is going to be replaced by McIntyre. He'll play there as the box to box. I'm also going to take off a complacent Burrell for some reason. He'll be replaced by Greenslade. And then I'm looking perhaps at bringing in Nichols, getting him a bit of fitness. Maybe even changing one of the other mids because Sablia... He's been one who struggled with fitness a little bit. He's one we can't afford to miss, as you've seen here. Nelson again going forward is crucial, but who's going to struggle to make midweek the most? Maybe even one of the defenders. Who's got the worst natural fitness? He's great. Paulwell, not so much. And to be fair, Thomas is in between. So maybe it's going to be Paulwell who gets replaced, but I'll leave it five more minutes. Well, 70 minutes gone. Accrington have managed their first shot of the game, albeit it wasn't on target. Colkit is struggling again, but I'm going to leave him on up there. Do we get three subs or five? Because if it's three, Sabley is going to have to be the man. I don't know that we have a replacement, though. The only natural one is Hill, and then bring Nichols on right wing back. Do that. And do we have another one for Thomas? Grehon on for him. And then left centre half, it will be Squires for Paulwell. 
Those are the five. We've got 20 minutes to go. We've been really good. We've been really solid at the back. Can we keep the clean sheet? Because yet again, we cannot score more than a goal. We can't just put a game to bed. And that's becoming a frustration. As Nichols throws in by the corner flag. We're dominant again. Nelson delivers to Greenslade. That might help. First goal of the season for this club. Second goal of the season in all competitions. Really important moment. We're 2-0 up. We've doubled our lead. And I think we're going through in this FA Cup tie. Now can we turn this form into the league season? Because I need our strikers to start scoring. Accrington have been awful. And they've played like a side who are bottom of the league. Who are struggling with confidence. And have gone to a decent team. Still struggles with Cole Kip. We've got to look at that soon. But for now, before we go and face Stevenage in the midweek league game. We've got an FA Cup second round draw to find out who we're going to be facing. Well, here we are for the second round FA Cup draw. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's one round before the big boys come in. But if we could get a Bolton or a Charlton or someone away from home, could yet be a big money spinner. So let's skip the draw, see who we face back in a moment to find out. Is it going to be a big boy or ideally a National League South or North side at home? That would be great. I think this would qualify as big boy, but it's a home tie again, and that might be crucial because Bromley will host Reading, a side that start the save in the championship in the second round of the FA Cup. That'll definitely be a sellout. It's going to be a really good game, and it actually makes the next episode brilliant because I think we've got now two games that we can really enjoy. I'll show Maidenhead. We'll play two games off camera and then we'll play Reading at home because they are definitely the two biggest matches. So that is changing the shape of the next episode. I can't not show you that FA Cup tie. Probably across the teams we've managed in this save. Is that the biggest team we've faced so far? I can't imagine we faced a bigger side than Reading. So we'll skip through to our midweek game against Stevenage. That's going to be crucial. But now, after five more league games, hopefully getting our form back, we'll have a big reward against the top League One side. And here we go, after the euphoria of a big FA Cup result, it is back to the league where we have been struggling. Of course, the minimum expectation, minimum, is that we reach the playoffs this year. If we don't do that, and if we drop out in these next few games, we're going to be in trouble. With Stevenage away today, that could happen. And if it does, I'm going to be looking over my shoulder. So let's see if we can put together a run now. Let's see if we can get Colkit scoring up front. And let's see how we react here. Stevenage, of course, EFL club at the start, flying in League 2 in real life. And we've got a few players not quite fit. So this is going to be tricky. What do we go for? I'm looking at what players we can bring in. Maybe thinking about switching Burrell and Greenslade just because the similar ability and Greenslade's got a goal. He's confident. I'm looking in midfield. Maybe it's a time for someone like Nick Freeman to come in. Just play a game instead of Nelson. And Revan at left wing back is struggling a tad. But... There's no one to bring in for him just yet. So I'm going to bring Nichols back in on the right. He is the first choice and he is fit now. Thomas Hill will replace Nelson on the bench. And then the rest of it, do I bring on Cowan? Yes. Cowan will replace Saidi just so we've got a left wing back on the bench. That is the team we're going for. How many changes is that? Nichols in right wing back. Green's laid in up front. Freeman in midfield. Three changes. Away to Stevenage we go. Fingers crossed we can get a result. Well, a real big opportunity for us here. Wayne Brown in charge of Stevenage. What sort of side have they got? Some good players. Jesse Deborah among them at the back. Someone who starred for us in our Woking live stream save. Those who are following over on Twitch will know him well. Carl Wooten drops out of the 11. Otherwise, fairly young side. Fairly inexperienced side. And maybe one we can take advantage of. For us, it's all about goals. When we score, when we take our chances, we often win games. But we've not been consistent enough. It's so frustrating to watch because you can see all the components there. We're a quality side. We just haven't quite got that finish in touch. Let's see if we can find it today as we did from set pieces against Atkinson. There is not long to go before we drop out the playoffs here. So we've got to get ourselves back in form. Into the first half at Stevenage. Not the best representation of the ground there. I'm sure if we're at our best, we're capable of a result. But if not, we're going to be looking over our shoulder. And we're going straight from the Stevenage kickoff, which is always a big concern. Jesse Deborah, the man picking it up. Two different styles today. They're playing a back four. We've, of course, gone for the five and they're straight in from it. Hutchinson across. He better be offside. He better be offside. He's not. We are behind in 15 seconds. 15 seconds against Stevenage. What is happening to us? The lack of clean sheets in the league. The fact that in this game, we're not even dominating. We've been awful. I'm going to drop to cautious. I'm going to encourage and try and get a reaction. But 
this is turning out to be the one a month, isn't it? And for all of our defeats in the last month or so, we've not had that one since the Boreham Wood episode where we've just had an awful performance. We had one against Eastleigh a bit earlier in the season and these top sides away are trouble. So let's see if we can nick a goal and get back into it. But at the moment, it's one-way traffic. Wright's got the ball in goal for the hosts. Brings the ball forward. No one even presses. Over the top to Thomas who intercepts. Bennett brings it downfield with a big long ball. Great short passing, but it's in for Green's laid and it's tipped onto the post. It's a brilliant save. It's another near miss. It's another what might have been moment. I'm so disappointed by this performance. There's 10 minutes to the break. Colkit again is struggling. I'm not sure what the difference is here because we dominate every game and then we just have this one awful performance a month. We mentioned it against Borehamwood. We had it against Eastley. It's so annoying. I really just feel like I don't understand what's missing from this team. I've watched a few of the games on full mode. I've looked at the data hub. I've looked at the analysis. It is so similar to what we did in Woking, where we were winning the league, where we were doing really well. The only problem I can find is that we're not taking chances and we're not preventing goals by making individual errors. And at the back, even the defence now, we're letting a goal in 15 seconds. They've all got a decent rating. Stably has got a good rating without really offering anything. Where on earth does the quality come from here? There's an hour on the clock. It's still all Stevenage. And I feel like we're going to have to make some bold changes here. But I don't know what helps us get a result as Colkit wins the ball back for Freeman. We haven't seen as much of that since the early weeks of the season as Riley picks it up in midfield for Bennett. Chance to play over the top but goes wise to Greenslade. He now goes back to Bennett and Sablia. Better football. Playing through the middle with Riley. Now looks for the right ball for Colkit. You've got to score this. Oh, he does score it. I can't even celebrate it yet because one all is not a huge amount of success for us here. But it's his 10th of the season. He ends his little goal drought. Maidenhead take the lead in their game as well. James Kroll getting that. And now we've got in the ascendancy here as Nichols turns his man, finds Freeman. Rare start for him. Ball across his paw. Cleared as far as Revan. Shots over. There are a few tired legs. There's a few poor performers. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to straight swap Burrell for Greenslade. Whoever starts just plays woefully. I'm looking at Revan at left wing back for either Cowan or Hill. I'm going to go Hill. We'll swap Nichols to the left. And then at the back, I could take off Paulwell again. I could take off Terrell Thomas. But I'm looking into midfield. Have we got something else we can do? Freeman's not had a great game. McIntyre's a good player. I think that's the sub I'm going to look at. Which way round are they better? It doesn't really matter. So I think we're going to stick with that. We'll just see how it pans out. And we've got a free kick again. We've been a much better side since the goal. And Paul Wells headed that one just wide. It is starting to become a case of, are we going to take our chance again? Because we're really in the ascendancy. We've really got the momentum in this match. We're going to encourage again. There's 10 to go. It's not the worst result away at Stevenage because they are one of those sides up there. But we need to start making up for lost time as Colkit puts the cross in, headed away and now look at the counter. We've got four back, but they're all ignoring Rowe. He plays back to Cashman, who scored that early goal. Long over the top, don't you dare. We had four back. No one's closed anyone down. Wooten to the byline. You have got to be kidding me. How on earth has he found himself free there? Four defenders back. None of them close down the player when he's making the run. Then when he gets the ball, they all go and chase him. All four of them and completely leave Hutchinson in the box. And for the third time this season, we have lost the game in the 90th minute or later. It's not good enough. And we weren't even chasing the game there. We were playing cautious. We had four people back from the set piece and he's still come back to bite us on the backside. The spine of the team did better, but I don't really get those ratings. How can all three centre-halves have a good or a solid rating when they all just completely ignored the striker and ran towards the ball in the last minute. It's cost us the game. For 88 minutes, we were good. For two minutes, we were poor and we've lost it again. Let's go and have a look at the schedule for when it's going to be back. I might need some help down in the comments because it can't be that the tactic's wrong because the players are playing well. The ratings overall are pretty good and we're dominating nearly every match. This one being a rare exception. We just cannot find that missing piece. It is an infuriating season so far. The settling in period is taking a while here. So let's get through the dressing room. I'm proud of the effort because they did play all right. But let's go and look at when we're going to be back. Former club maiden head up next. That is going to be a shocker if we lose it. Well, we're down to ninth place after the freedom of the penalty area was offered to Isaac Hutchinson. We are out of the playoffs. Does that affect our club vision rating? 
C for the board feedback, down from the Bs in the last week or so, D for the supporters, right? We are under pressure and we are going to struggle if we don't get back in there soon. We've got to reach the playoffs as a minimum. We've got a friendlier run of games on paper coming up. While there was frustration in recent weeks, Stevenage is a tough game. Telford at home, Maidenhead at home, Yeovil at home. You look at the table and you say, realistically, it's got to be three wins. All of them down in the bottom half, all of them struggling for results. We have got to find a way to win them. If you did enjoy that one and are looking forward to see if we can, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. We'll be back with a bit of a weird episode next time as we face Maidenhead at home in the National League and then we skip two games to play Reading at home in the second round of the FA Cup. It's a massive opportunity for us to get to that third round, but it is a tough opposition. So whether we can do it, we'll wait and see. If you want to find out and stay up to date, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Please do check out all the links in the eye above. You can find our other playlists and the Twitch channel up there too. Come and check out the football podcast as well. We're having great fun over there at the minute. And on New Year's Day, keep your eyes peeled for the channel review. A little annual message we do over here. And for a lot of you, it'll be the first time we've released one since you've been following the channel but thank you for coming along as always the frustration continues with three successive league defeats can we bounce back next time against our former club well i hope you'll come and join me to find out